So hey there and welcome. Really glad to have you joining us today and really glad to have with us our guest Jordana Merkin joining us from um, Voice for Good Marketing where she serves as the CEO and founder. She's here to share a very valuable topic and insight with us around how to connect to your people. And I want to say to your peeps, mainly for the whole like Easter Easter. reference of that very sugary candy, (laughs) but all about nonprofit messaging. So she brings some insight to the conversation for sure. We also want to say thank you and express immense gratitude to these sponsors. So shout out to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, 180 Management Group, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, JMT Consulting, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Again, thank you to these companies that allowed us so many amazing opportunities, just like the one we are about to have now with Jordana. So again, welcome to the show. Thrilled to have you. Again, for everyone watching and listening, Jordana Merkin has joined us, CEO and founder, Voice for Good Marketing. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you both for having me. It's great to be here. Start us off by telling a little bit about yourself and a little bit about what Voice for Good Marketing does, in particular in the nonprofit community. Yeah, absolutely. So I have been working in and around nonprofits my entire career. Um, I was, and to go to go way back, I was an English major and creative writing and sociology minors in college, and uh, really what attracted me to all of those areas of study was making mass communication personal and how to really use words to drive people to action. And so I started off in, um, I live in New Jersey now, I was in college in New York City, and I started off in an advertising direction and I did a bunch of internships at for-profit companies and I really enjoyed using my brain in that way, but uh, I quickly learned that I needed to be marketing a mission. So um, for my first job out of college, I have been um, in marketing communications um, roles at various nonprofits. I was in-house uh, at a few different organizations for about a decade. And for the last four years, um, I have been running my consulting business Um I do a bit of fractional marketing communications support, um, true to my roots, um, but the core of my work really is in messaging guides and really helping organizations get clear on what they do, who they do it for, and how to communicate it. Um, Because as I always say, clarity creates connection. Um, So really laying that foundation for all the wonderful awareness raising and fundraising um, that is made possible when people can answer those questions clearly. Mm -hmm. You know, I love what you said. I feel like we could end the show right now and you have (laughs) spoken (laughs) to me in a way because I find nonprofit organization and not so much in the for-profit world, but nonprofit organizations will like start and redo their messaging over and over and over. And they haven't backed up, created clarity and then worked it, you know, like, as you say, you know, work the plan. It, It always seems like there's this whole new pressure to start over and start new and, and we get, sidetracked by the shiny thing right and we become internally fatigued and so we feel like we've got to you know get something brand new and it's just such a spiral down as opposed to spiraling up so I'm really excited to have you talk to us about this and so one of the things you said that's so interesting is clear messaging clear messaging and that it packs a punch what does clear messaging mean to you and what should it mean to us? Yeah, so it's a great question. I love that graphic. Um, So (laughs) clear messaging really is, as I said, it's what you do, who you're for, and how you communicate it. So what you do... um, I, to, to your point, Julia, that, you know, resetting the messaging over and over and over again, I find that comes up because... You know, people will say, well, we do so many things. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'll say, well, you have so many programs and that's wonderful. And that's, you know, that's great. But you you should at least have one mission, right? So let's think about how to communicate that mission. Um, I, you know, 
I usually work on when I'm working on a messaging guide with an organization, we start with that, with the big picture story, as I call it. So it's where your mission meets your impact, meets the emotional core of your work, right? Because that's how you're going to really connect with people in a clear way. So it really is like that, that zooming out to that common denominator, right? So yes, you may have many programs, but you don't need to reinvent the wheel with your messaging every time you talk about one of them. You should not reinvent the wheel with your messaging every time you talk about one of them. And so when you when someone says, what do you do? It's really an opportunity to answer with your why. So it's, you know, it's not just the, oh, we have X, Y, and Z programs. It's, but this is really at the core of our work. And when you can answer that clearly, um, you know, the, the, the punch that it packs is that, you know, it makes you memorable and it signals to your people, right? That's the next piece is who you're for. So that's both who you serve and who your supporters are. And sometimes those are the same people and sometimes they're different people, but in all cases, it's really signaling to those people, um, that you are for them. So um, I often like to quote Seth Godin and saying, people like us do things like this. Um, and all of your messaging should really be signaling to who is people like us? And, you know, who are the people who support, volunteer, participate, however you want to fill that in. Um, but really having that clear messaging is the foundation to all of the communications that you'll have around that. Yeah. I love what you just said. And I'm fascinated by this. Jared, I have one quick question and then I'll, I'll let you jump in. How often should we be doing this, taking this exercise and, and realizing what our clear messaging is? Is this like, you know, you, you put that flag in the sand and then you just die by it? Or what does that look like when we get antsy and feel like we need to change that message, that clear message? Yeah, so it's a great question. That big picture story should be fairly evergreen, but that, you know, evergreen means forever. And I don't know that, you know, forever is a long time, right? So <laughs> it's not the kind of thing we want to be changing too often. We do, we should be referencing it daily, right? So we do always want to make sure that it resonates and that it's still accurate and that things have not shifted. Um, but really, we want to make sure that all of the things we're saying in our day-to-day -day reflect back on that big picture message. So unless your mission is changing or, you know, you're going in a different direction, it really should be something that, um, something that lasts for a long time. Um, but not in a sitting on the shelf, getting dusty kind of way in a actively being referenced every day kind of way. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to throw a curveball in here because I had this aha moment, Julia, when you were talking about, uh, you know, when you see nonprofits really changing their messaging, might there be a correlation in how often we change the messaging with how often the person in that position changes? Because mm -hmm. we talk about the, you know, the workforce and the turnover. And I'm really curious, Jordana, if you see this with the clients, if it's like, okay, here's the big message. But when we have a new development director, we have a new marketing person come in, they put their own twist and stamp on it. And so it does look on the outside as if the message has been completely rewritten. Mm -hmm. I'm really curious by that. That yeah. is a great observation. Yeah, it's a great question. Yeah. So I think, and thank you for that, because it's an important point that the messaging guide um, is an internal document, right? And it's important yes. to have it in writing and it's important to get everyone on the same page. So yeah. when someone new comes in, you know, it's not to say that they can't bring something new to the table, but they really shouldn't be, again, unless there is an organizational shift or, you know, a new strategic plan that goes in a completely different direction, the new person should not be completely changing the personality right. and voice and values of the organization. That should stay consistent. And so having this in writing um, is how you get clear internally, both with current internal people, that staff and board, which also are not always on the same page, um, but then new people, right? So day one of your new job, read this over so you can get a sense of what we do and how we talk about it. Okay, so I'm right. going to step back and have you 
spend a little bit more time on that messaging guide because I have only seen a handful in the trajectory of my career, sadly, a handful that were well done. And I would love for you to address a couple things of what that, you know, some people might refer to it as a style guide, but mm -hmm. if you could talk briefly about what that looks like, because to me, that's, that's the foundational point. Number one, you get that into your point, you hand that over and you're like, okay, everybody, this is how we're rowing, right? Talk yeah. to you about what, what are some of the main elements of that? Yeah, absolutely. So it pulls together your mission, your vision and your values to start. A lot of, a lot of organizations have that publicly on their website, but even that is not always consistent with like what's let's say is on the homepage of the website. You know, you click through to that page and suddenly it feels different and said it. So really pulling it all together in one place. So mission, vision, values, values, especially because that should really be informing all of your communications. That's how you're going to signal to your people that they're your people because you have that values alignment. Um, so that's crucial. Also, what makes you different? So, you know, if you are, um, many organizations have similar missions to other organizations. And so what makes you, you? And that is, yes, that has to do with the details of your programs, but also that's, again, in your values, that's your personality, that's your voice and tone and style, which also is a part of the guide. Um, if someone were to sit down and have, you know, a cup of coffee with your organization, not your ED, not your development director, but the organization as a whole, what feelings would they be left with when they walked away? How would that sound? How would, you know, what, what emotional pieces, you know, would go into that? And so all of that is part of it. Um, so that different people can write for the organization, speak on behalf of the organization, put out content on behalf of the organization um, in a cohesive way, because that's going to be, um, you know, much more clearly and loudly amplified. And, um, you know, so it's also, it's the problem you solve as well, your positioning within. So even if you're addressing something, maybe again, if your mission is similar to someone else, then what is the problem that you are setting out to solve? Um, I see this often in, on nonprofit websites in particular, but really in communications in general, where they'll set out with, well, here's the, here's our solution. Here's what we do. Um, and really that's only half an answer and that's not opening the door to educate your people and to ask them to partner with you on solving it. If it's just the solution, then you don't need me, right? You've got it. So educating me on the problem first and then the reason why the solution needs to happen is also a really important piece. Amazing. Yeah. And I was hoping that would be your answer too, is like, we have to maintain continuity and to the, the next talking point, that's what strengthens the team. And so regardless, the message stays the same and someone can come in and kind of, you know, tailor it to their style or, or what that looks like, but maintaining brand. Talk to us about how, and I feel like you did a little bit already, but really how this does strengthen the team. Uh, you mentioned the board, the staff, right? Like volunteers. Uh, there's so many ways to do this, but what are you seeing? Yeah, so I work primarily with smaller organizations, um, and but I have worked, you know, over the years with organizations of all sizes and the constant, whether you're a team of three, 30 or 300 is unfortunately we work in silos, right? We all have too much on our plates and we're focused on our one area and, um, or in our many areas, right? As titles tend to build up in the nonprofit sector, but we're focused on our piece, pieces of the puzzle. Um, and those silos get in our way of communicating effectively because when we have an inconsistent message, that's a weaker message. It's not memorable. It's confusing. People can't support what they don't understand. And so that, again, that to go back to, you know, if clarity creates connection, then when that's not clear, then you're not connecting internally and therefore you can't amplify that externally. So having again, this messaging guide in place internally is, you know, it's a reminder and reinforcement of your common purpose of your people like us work for organizations like this, right? That starts from within. Um, so of that, again, the common values. Um, and that's also how you 
uh, attract the right staff as well, right? When you're putting out consistent messaging, you're not only going to attract you know, the right donors, volunteers, how, whatever you're looking for, but also the right staff, because then they will understand very clearly what you're about. It's also a great reminder on the hard days, and we all have the hard days, that, you know, this is why we're here. Um, so it's just, it's important for morale as well as, you know, growth externally. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I hadn't thought of it that way. But you are right, because sometimes we have to get out of whatever is boiling inside of us for that moment and then extricate ourselves from, you know, this small part of, of the bigger picture. And I love that. I love that idea, especially when you're in crisis. And so many of our nonprofits across, you know, our lands are crisis oriented, right? They deal with the hard things, right? So this is kind of part of their their daily work. Um, you know, Jared, it's a really interesting thing because it almost makes me think about how um, talking about like the strategic planning and, and those conversations that we've had actually even this week, how you can pull those, those lines through and uh, it really helps guide you or re maybe the word is reset, you know? Uh -huh. Uh, resetting. Well, what about when it comes to the engaging the supporters, growing that audience? I love the word amplify. Um, I, I too was a mass communication major. And when you uh, said earlier, like, I want to bring mass communications into this personalized space. And, and I didn't say it nearly as eloquently as you did, but it's like, well, how do you personalize ma something in the masses, right? Like when it comes to something that's so broad, but that clear messaging does truly engage supporters and grow audiences. And I guarantee you're going to tell us a little bit too about through that personalization, that clear messaging. What are you, what are you seeing works well for our supporters and our audience? Yeah. So I would say the golden rule of communication is show me, you know me. Um, I think there are a few quotes that can be attributed to truly everyone ever, but I think if there ever was one, that's it, right? Everyone wants to be seen, wants to be, you know, felt like they're understood. And so when you're writing a communication, um, or filming, a, you know, any kind of if it's video or something written or, you know, whatever it is, you want to keep your audience or audiences in mind. And so, and really that show me, you know, me is the way to do that. So again, thinking about who they are and who they are in relation to your organization. So again, to go back to the values that are really at the core of all of this. So Again, that center of the Venn diagram between their values and your values as an organization should be a pretty large center because those are your people. It's not worth convincing people who don't share those values to become supporters, right? You want to invest in those people who are already aligned, which is not to say that you shouldn't educate. Of course, we need to educate our people. Um, and that goes back to that problem solution framework. But the, the alignment should be there. And, you know, we live in isolating times. We live in divisive times. It's an election year. I know there's a lot of concern, especially in the nonprofit world, about cutting through that noise. But I think, again, if we can lean into who we are as an organization to make our personality shine through, to, um, to really put our values out there, to make it clear what we're about and what we're not about, because... I always, you know, pause before I say this because I know sometimes it's hard to hear, but your organization isn't for everyone. And when you try to make it for everyone, that's when you get unclear messaging, that's when you're not memorable, that's when you sound like everybody else. So to engage your current people, and I I, I put in current in quotes usually because your current people are never, you know, they're maybe recent people, but you can't count on them as always being your people, right? We need to develop that relationship over time. We need to build upon it. Um, and so to really engage those groups of people that are already warmed up to your organization, as well as attracting new people, that really takes clear messaging. And that really takes putting out there what you're about. And again, 
who you're for. And even if it's multiple audiences, again, it's that big picture story, that common denominator, those that emotional pull, the values you share, the personality that you're putting out there that is going to make people know people like us support organizations like this. Wow. I love you know, that. You mentioned something, the divisive times, and I'm glad you did. Julie and I, over the last four years together, have been speaking about the pandemics, plural, <laughs> right? Like not just COVID, like so many different issues within our community. And I love that you said you're not for everyone, right? Like your organization, your mission, your values aren't in alignment with everyone. And I do agree that too often we are fearful to really put out what we stand for, how we make decisions, what we choose to do because of the fear of losing a donor, losing a supporter group, losing, you know, that next big check, whatever that might be. Do you have any tips as we move into our final concept today, when it comes to actions to achieve this clear messaging? Like, what can we do it, for everyone listening today? Like, what can we do? What should, I love this image too. Like, what needs to be top of our post-it note? Mm hmm yeah. So, so yeah, so I'll go back to the big picture story and just get a little bit more specific on how to achieve it. So as I said, the big picture story is mission meets impact meets values. It's the emotional core of what you do. So the way that I, the exercise I do to achieve that with an organization is we start with that question of what do you do? And we think about, you know, how that is answered at its most basic level. And then we peel back the layers of that onion by saying, why is that important? At least three times to really drill down to why it matters. Because it's not just that you feed hungry people, it's that you feed hungry people because they are worthy of being fed and we believe that everyone should have basic, you know, have their basic needs met. That's a much more emotionally driven, values driven version of what do you do than we feed hungry people. Um, so to have that, to have that as your baseline common denominator, right? So then you know, and I, I, the que a question I get a lot is, well, we have so many different audience groups. How do we speak to all of them? And, you know, that's, and it depends kind of a question, right? It depends on the communication and who's receiving it. And of course that show me, you know, me piece, you always need to keep the audience in mind. But that's why the big picture story is so important because every communication should be reflecting that big picture story. And yeah, the, you'll tweak the content and you'll tweak the, you know, what, how it looks depending on who's receiving it. But the big picture story should resonate, will resonate with all of your people. If it doesn't resonate, then you're not, they're not your people. Um, you know, just to, I always, it's this perhaps trite example, but if you run a dog rescue, then like, don't waste your time on the cat people because they're not your people. And, you know, you're not going to convince them to become dog people. Like just, you know, use the language, use the words, use the values that are true to dog people. I love that because- I agree with Jared. I think that we are so fearful of loss that we put that front and center as opposed to being curious and embracing moving forward. Right. We're yeah. so, we're so frightened by that and the, the need for everyone to love us and, you know, feel like, you know, we don't have any, um, actions and you know the great terry axelrod taught me the the phrase you know bless and release and the concept meaning that you know i want to share with you what we do this is our work and if it isn't a fit then great bless and release them let them go on as you said to the cat rescue <laughs> right let them still be a part of the philanthropic environment it's just not our our specific environment right, right. Absolutely. But it still builds community. It still builds solutions for our, you know, our existence. So it's an um, interesting thing. But man, it's hard for organizations to embrace that for some weird reason. It is hard. I think, you know, you want to you want to speak to you. What if what, what the what ifs come in? Right. What if there's this other group of people who would support us? But I think the clearer you can get, the more you'll find that your supporter base grows because if you're speaking to everyone, you're speaking to no one. So just really being clear on who your people are and who you're looking to attract. Um, 
But just to go back, Jared, to your question about the, you know, the election year that I brought up, I also would say that it's, I would, you know, put your values out there as they relate to your mission. I don't think organizations have to put out a statement on everything, um, especially as, you know, we get closer to November and more issues come up. Um, if something is relevant to you, um, then I think that's when you can, you know, harness that if that's, you know, the public conversation is happening. Joan Gary just had a great video on LinkedIn about that. If the public conversation is happening around um, your issue, then talk about your issue. Um, but again, be clear about your big picture story. And if something doesn't align with your big picture story, then don't waste your time on it. I, you don't need to weigh in on everything. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. I, and I think, you know, too often, uh, uh, maybe as individuals, we're all worried about rocking the boat. Now, on the flip side, there's some people that want to rock the boat. Like that's what they live for. You know, they want to get those um, those bantering comments on social media uh, and, and whatnot. So, yeah, there, there's a lot out there. Well, for anyone, Jordana, who would like to maybe work with you or have a consultation, um, Let's bring that slide up again, Julia, because I want everyone to know how they can connect with Jordana, learn more information, really zoom out to zoom in. And I, I also want to honor your logo. I love that megaphone. Like it didn't go, it, yeah, it, it wasn't missed on me. I see it in that V in the voice. For those of you listening, it, the voice um, is using a <laughs> megaphone as the V and it's, it's really powerful to me, but Jordana Merkins. CEO and founder, Voice for Good Marketing. Check out her website. I guarantee you it's an amazing one. It is. Voiceforgoodmarketing.com. Uh, do you offer consultations? What, what does this look like for anyone interested to learn more? I do. Yeah. Um, you can set one up through my website. Um, I'm happy to have a conversation. Um, I also have some freebies on my website. If you want to kind of get started with your own prompts for messaging, that's, that's on there as well. And I'm happy to connect on LinkedIn. Great. Well, thank you because we have had uh, somebody that has written in to ask about that. And as Jarrett said, voice for good marketing.com. It's a great website and you can really, um, learn more about Jordana's work and, and how the process can work maybe for your nonprofit, because it is Jordana to me, one of those things that we get so caught up in our work that we forget to step back and actually, you know, really reflect on what our work is. And, and I love that you use that we're doing. I think that's a powerful, powerful concept and people like us, I think that's a cool way to look at this like people like us are invested in working towards this issue and i think if you gosh if you can just plant that seed in a team's mind um, that's a super powerful thing we can't be all things to all people it's kind of like marketing rule 101 but for some reason um we we lose sight of that so this has been great you've been as we say speaking my lingity i love it <laughs> Thank you, so, Thank you much. so much. Thank you. It's been wonderful to have this conversation. Oh Thanks. my gosh. It's been really, really fun. Well, we want to say thank you um, and a huge shout out of gratitude to our sponsors. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Thought Leader Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy, JMT Consulting, the nonprofit nerd herself, and nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that join us day in and day out so we can deliver really interesting conversations um, with our guests from all over the world. Uh, Jordana came to us today from uh, the East Coast where it's super cold. <laughs> and so if you joined us um, earlier in the green room chatter, we were talking about weather and, and, and uh, you know, the differences between parts of our country. So um, really check us back out and we will see you again. As we end every episode, we leave with this message. And it's such an interesting thing because Jarrett and I say this all the time. It means different things upon different days. And it goes like this, to stay well so you can do well. Thank you so much, ladies.